Hi, I'm Christopher John Farley, a senior editor at the Wall Street Journal. I'm here with Aretha Franklin, the queen of soul. She's got a new album out called Aretha Franklin Sings the Great Diva Classics. Ms. Franklin, thanks for coming to the Wall Street Journal. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Now, your new album is your highest debut of your entire career on the Billboard charts. I heard that. I it's heard 72. That. How does it feel to have such a, a high charting album at this stage in your career? Absolutely wonderful. Whoa! <laughs> and what do you think people are responding to with this album? What made them decide to, uh, you know, to go out there and buy it? Well, I don't know. Um, we've got some great titles uh, of things that Mr. Davis presented to me and gave me a list of, um, of the singers and the songs. And uh, I'm doing People, Streisand. I'm doing Midnight Train to Georgia, Gladys. Doing I'm Every Woman, Shaka Khan. Uh, no One, Alicia Keys. I Will Survive, Gloria Gaynor. I'm a Survivor, Destiny's Child. So where did the idea come from to have you, an established superstar, take on the songs of some other performers, some of whom are new, some of whom have been around before, you know, like Barbara Streisand. Where did this idea come from? It was Mr. Davis, the chairman, uh, the chairman's idea. Uh, the COO of RCA, as I said, he brought the list to me and the list of singers and so on. But it was great because I had already bought some of these records and enjoyed them. So it was a natural. It was super. Now, of course, with today's singers, there's some issues with singing sometimes, a lot of use of auto-tune. I'm wondering, as someone who's you know, known for her voice, has such a reputation, what do you think of the use of auto-tune by, by some younger singers? What is auto-tune? I don't even know what auto-tune is. It's a kind of way of electronically adjusting your voice so oh, it, doesn't sound, it doesn't sound pitchy, it uh -huh. doesn't sound um, <laughs> wrong, it sounds sure. like it's hitting the note yeah. right on. Oh, that's ridiculous. That would be ridiculous, right? After 50 years, <laughs> please. So Rolling in the Deep by Adele, obviously a terrific young singer, someone who's very contemporary now. Um, Tell me your, your thought process in saying, you know what, I'm going to tackle this song. Well, let's see, Rolling in the Deep. I liked it. When I first heard it, I liked it. I saw some of Adele's promo, and a lot of young kids were on the bus. They were singing it, and they were having a really, really wild good time. Like, <laughs> Rolling in the Deep, you know, because they couldn't really sing, but they were just having a, such a good time. I said, you know, I like that melody and I like that song. So when uh, Clive presented it to me, I said, absolutely. Have you heard back from Adele? Have you heard back from any of the singers whose works you take on, like Alicia Keys, on well, this album to get the reaction? I don't know Adele, and we haven't had the occasion or pleasure to meet yet. So it's not heard back. I haven't heard from them to begin with. Uh. Now, when you take on someone else's song, you know, obviously you're known for taking, taking on respect, your mm -hmm. signature song, a song that Otis Redding wrote and had popularized even mm -hmm. before you, mm -hmm. and yet it became your signature song. Do you ever think that I'm going to take this song over? I mean, are you trying to top the performer that did it before you? No, with singers, it's a thing sometimes where you hear a great song and you said, oh man, I wish I'd have got that song first, you know? So after it's been out a while, you have the opportunity to re-record it after a while, you know, after so many years. And then we don't own these songs. You know, we, anybody can sing a song. We don't own them. Uh, now, since your new album is about divas, I want to just sort of throw out a few names of divas and sort of get your one-word reaction, sort of get your impression mm. of various singers. So when I say the, the name Adele, what comes to mind? Mm -hmm. Young singer, good singer. Alicia Keys. Um, young performer, good writer, producer. Taylor Swift. Okay, great, uh, great gowns, beautiful gowns. Uh, uh, Whitney Houston. Whitney was a, a talent, mm. definitely a talent. She had a gift. Mm. And Sissy's baby. And let's sort of change genres a little bit. Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj. Hmm. <laughs> now I'm going to pass on that one. <laughs> We're talking on Election Day, and Barack Obama, you are a big supporter of his. He famously sang at his inauguration. You had that great hat that went viral. Um, how do you feel he's done now that he's in his second term, finishing it up? How do you feel, looking back on his term, how do you feel he's done as well, president? Well, it's really not for me to say. Mm. Uh, I, do, you, do you have much contact with him now that he's been in office? Do you plan to do anything, no. any other kind of events with him? No. 
Uh, what kind of steps are you taking to sort of get over this sort of famous fear of flying? Sure, you have? I just. Is it famous? Oh, yes, please. It's pretty, it's pretty famous. People know here. about it. People know that you don't like get to fly. Get out of here. Um, desensitizing. You know, I did go to a fearless flyers class. And um, you're to desensitize. You go, you go through the same procedure that you would if you were flying. Going to the desk, calling, checking on a flight, um, any specific flight you'd like to take, that kind of thing. Now, back to the album, you know, uh, uh, of you singing the, this, these songs made famous by other divas. When you go in to interpret a song, to make it yours, what is your creative process? I mean, uh, the, you have this, the song in front of you. Do you play it on the piano to see how it, how it feels? I mean, mm. how do you go into a song to sort of make it your own? Well, I just like to live with a song. How, how just, do you do that? Just, how do you live um, with a song? You just sit with a song, you know. You, you take your time and you listen to it. That's about it. But I'm not going to tell you my trade secrets, Chris. I'm not, I, I'm not after the trade secrets. I'm after just the, the way, as an artist, well, you go into the song Well, those are trade secrets. Those are trade secrets. Those are trade secrets? Yes, you know you it. You can't share it with me? You only, know only it. Only a few <laughs> million journal You might go into singing, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Do you think you'll do a part two for this album? Obviously, this is an album that sort of begs for a sequel. You've taken on some other great divas songs, signature songs. Are there more songs you'd want to add to the list and maybe do another album like this? I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. It depends on what Mr. Davis would like to do, and we'll talk about it. Um, uh, I'll approve half, and he'll approve half, or we'll see. Now, I saw that you and Clive had a back and forth over Twitter, and one of the questions, uh, one of the answers you had was very interesting, where you mentioned that if you hadn't become a singer, you might have become an, either a ballerina mm -hmm. or a registered nurse. Mm -hmm. You tweeted that out from your account. Yes. Were you joking, or are those actually things you were thinking about doing? No, no. Listen, I went to the Academy of Ballet over on the east side. And um, when I left um, New York, going to Los Angeles, when the industry moved west, I went to a few classes at Stephen Winters out there. And uh, Arthur Mitchell and I uh, are very good friends. There was one ballet step that I, that it just really took me a hard time to learn that step. And it was so simple. He just showed it to me another way, and like within seconds, I was doing it. And it was like glissade, glissade, pas de vous ensemble, okay? Yeah. So simple. You know, Arthur, was, he's a master. So really, was it uh, something you considered early on in your, your career? Is this something, a path well, you might have gone down? Well, something, yes, that I love doing. I love the ballet. And um, I did a ballet for Mr. Davis once. Um, I love it. Mm -hmm. You wrote a biography of yourself with David Ritz. Mm -hmm. um, he's recently come that out That was 15 or 20 years ago right. now. Which, what, what are you referring oh, from to? From These Roots. And from he, These Roots is, yes, the book that I wrote and he co-wrote. Right. Mm -hmm. And he's come up with his own biography of you. No, Have he's you, come up with a book of trash. Uh, That's all that is, is the book of trash. Mm -hmm. Lies, lies, and more lies, and lies on top of lies. That's all that is. What do you plan to do next musically? You, you finish this album, uh, you're, you're making some appearances. Um, what's next on the table for you? Well, let's see. Hmm, 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 hmm. Mm, we are talking about the biopic. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, we're talking about that. But what stage is that at right and, now? And uh, very, very close to signature. Uh. Very close on all three. Uh, who, there are three deals on the table. Now, in the past, you've talked about who you think could play you in a mm -hmm, biopic. Mm -hmm. Who do you think, right now, what's your feeling of who could play Aretha Franklin in a movie? Well, there are several people that we're considering, um, that I'm considering. Audra McDonald is one. She'd be great. Um, you know Audra's got a great voice, and she's, she's Broadway-oriented, but she is an actress. Mm -hmm. The question where Audra is concerned is whether or not she could she could deal with with soul as I sing it. But she's an actress, and so it would be her job, you know, it would be her job to um, meet that challenge. And um, uh, there, she just won, what, an, uh, a Tony for Lady Day? So it's possible, it's very possible. It depends on how she feels about it. And then there is the possibility of Jennifer Hudson and uh, there is the director's book, uh, names and faces that I'm not aware of and don't know about. 
And then there is the possibility of someone from the church, maybe, an unknown. I've heard you say that Jennifer Hudson is one of your favorite singers. But what about her really attracts you in terms of her, her voice and her vocal delivery? Jennifer Hudson is a very good singer. Oh. Um, she's just likable. Mm. She's likable. What do you think has been the holdup? Because you've been talking about the movie for some time. What, what is the holdup for the movie not being made? You'd think that at some point there, there would be there a There is movie. no holdup, but if you know anything about negotiations, uh -huh. you know they can go on forever. Mm. Yeah, there's no holdup, though. Well, Ms. Ms. Franklin, thanks a lot for coming to the Wall Street Journal. Thank it's you. It's been a pleasure talking to you. The album is Aretha Franklin Sings the Great Diva Classics. Thanks a lot. Thank you.